Bossing in MapleStory primarily revolves around you and your party using your skills optimally to get the most damage out of them as possible. Most skills have strong effects and long cooldowns, meaning that using them appropriately is important for defeating any boss as fast and efficiently as possible. Because of this, MapleStory bossing primarily revolves around a burst meta, where most if not all classes will use their strongest skills in a short period to stack their damage effects together while a boss is immobilized. Shadower is no different, and today we're going to take a look at the bursting and skill rotations that Shadower uses for optimal boss damage output. Hello everyone, my name is Chiseler, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at everything to do with Shadower's burst, both big and small. Shadower is a very versatile class when it comes to damage output, and excels greatly when its cooldowns are managed properly. This allows you to optimize the class's excellent consistent damage output. Thanks to Shadower's kit and low cooldowns, the class has access to three main types of burst. Full burst, partial burst, and off burst. I assume for the sake of this guide that you are familiar with how each individual skills that makes up a Shadower's burst work, so today we will primarily be reviewing how to put them together optimally for max damage output. Without further ado, let's get into Shadower's largest burst, the full burst. Shadower's full burst involves a large variety of skills being used together for a brief period of massive damage output. It can be tough to remember which order to use them, but a simple rule of thumb is to simply go from the longest to shortest duration. Shadower's full burst is as follows. First, set down Dark Flare, as this skill is affected by sources of minion duration like the Corsair Legion card. This technically makes it the longest duration skill and should be used first. It may not seem like much, but this skill can add up to approximately one Trick Blade's worth of damage over its duration, so be sure you always have it set down when bossing. Next, we will use both Maple Goddess's Blessing and Epic Adventurer. Both of these skills last for 60 seconds and will last long enough for your first off burst that we will touch on later. The next skills to use are dependent on the boss you are fighting. Shadow Walker is typically always used at this point, however Smokescreen can also be used to bump up you and your party's damage as well. Both of these skills have a 30 second duration. Smokescreen should only be used in your full burst for situations where you are fighting bosses with limited damage windows, as well as if you are bursting along with your party. The critical damage bonus from Smokescreen will apply to your party members as well, so be sure to use it when everyone bursts together during any boss fight. Bosses where you are fighting solo and should be bursting with Smokescreen include Slime when it's stunned, Gloom, and P3 Lucid. Otherwise, Smokescreen should be saved for your Partial Burst instead. Special mention should also be given for Shadow Walker during Gloom. This comes down to player preference, but I enjoy using Shadow Walker during the Terror State only as it essentially negates the concern of falling debris completely while fighting the gauge. I prefer to use it for survivability over burst damage in this scenario, and remove it from my burst rotation during this fight only. Otherwise, I use it when full bursting every other boss. The next skills to use are Double Last Resort and Terms and Conditions, also known as your Angelic Buster Link. It has been debated over the best order to use them in, however at the end of the day, as long as they are both used at this phase it will have a very marginal effect. The typically accepted order to maximize the damage output timing is Last Resort 1, then Terms and Conditions, and finally Last Resort 2. At this point, you are ready to bind the boss. Stand close to the boss and use Air to Nova to instantly bind them for 10 seconds. Sometimes it can be hard to set up your burst skills during the fight and may want to bind the boss sooner. If you are having difficulties with this, I would recommend binding the boss prior to using Last Resort and Terms and Conditions for a safer bind instead. I commonly do this for bosses like Darknell. If you do not have any special effect rings such as Oz rings or a RAR ring from Hyperspace Cube, feel free to skip this next step. For those of you with a ring effect, be sure to activate the ring here during your burst cycle, as these rings are very powerful and best saved for when the boss isn't moving. If you are using a ring of restraint, I would recommend binding the boss and using the ring behind the boss as well, so you can use Trick Blade and stay within the ring of restraint's area for its full duration. From here, you are done buffing up and ready to start using your damaging skills. Your first active skills are actually a combo that can be used together. If you press the Assassinate key and Slash Shadow Formation key at the same time, both A1 and Slash Shadow Formation will be used together. This is useful for a bit of extra damage, as well as storing an A2 to immediately use Trick Blade later in the burst. Your hardest hitting skill is up next, which is Sonic Blow. If you can, try to get the entire 2.5 seconds of the skill off. That will result in your best damage. After Sonic Blow is done, immediately press A2 and Trick Blade from the A1 we stored earlier to finish off your burst. 
After all of that is finished, you're back to weaving until it's time for your next burst. Shown on screen now is a full burst rotation at speeds you would typically perform it at while in a boss fight. Since most of Shadow Wars buffs and active skills are on a shorter cooldown, we are able to get off another strong burst exactly between your full bursts. This is called your Partial Burst. To pull this off, the skill order is as follows. First, be sure you are in Dark Sight. If it isn't already down, place your Dark Flare first as above. Next, use Smoke Screen as your skill to stay in Dark Sight. If you used your Smoke Screen or even your Shadow Veils from your Full Bursts or Off Bursts, still proceed with the Partial Burst even if you aren't in Dark Sight. It's better to get the skills off rather than sit on them for 30 seconds or however long it takes for Veil or Smoke Screen to come off cooldown. From there, it's the same rotation as before. Last Resort 1, Terms and Conditions, Last Resort 2, Special Ring, then you Slash Shadow Formation, Sonic Blow, and Trick Blade the exact same as before. Note that you will not have your bind off cooldown at this time and cannot bind the boss. Again, it's better to practice getting the skills off without a bind, as delaying to wait for a bind can throw your next full burst off by 10 to 30 seconds, which is a big damage loss. For liberated users with a Genesis Dagger, I recommend using your Jenny iframe at this time to safely get off the full burst. Keep weaving afterwards, and you've successfully pulled off your partial burst. Finally, Shadowers also have an off burst. This simply comprises of starting in Dark Sight, ensuring Dark Flare is down, then using Shadow Veil, Sonic Blow, and Trick Blade to finish it off. I wouldn't recommend using a special ring during this burst if it can be avoided. With that, all of Shadow Wars bursts have been covered. So how does all of this work together during a fight? Well, if all of it was done properly when cooldowns are off, you should be able to full burst, off burst, partial burst, then off burst one last time before your next full burst is ready to go. The cycle rinses and repeats. You also have a 10 second buffer as Shadow Walker has a 190 second cooldown. Here's a quick line diagram to summarize the process. At 0 seconds, start setting up and performing your full burst. At 45 seconds, perform an off burst. This off burst will be slightly stronger than the second, as you will still have the effects of Maple Goddess's Blessing and Epic Adventure active. At 90 seconds, perform your partial burst. Another 45 seconds after that, perform your second off burst. Another 55 seconds after that, your next full burst is ready to go. I've also prepared a spreadsheet that breaks down the entire 3 minute burst duration, if it helps to study that instead. A picture of that is linked in the description. Let's take a few minutes to review a recent Guardian Angel slime run I did to see this process in action. We'll start partway through the fight as I finish the check and stun the boss. I wait a few seconds, then set everything up in the order of the full burst and wail into the boss. As the boss becomes unstunned, I use my bind skill to rebind the boss. Guardian Angel Slime has a mechanic where I deal bonus damage while it's stunned, so it's good to get your damage off right away instead. This bind just allows me to get a bit more damage off before I need to start sending Magma Slimes flying. As Sonic Blow comes off cooldown, I set up Shadow Veil and enter Dark Sight, waiting for the boss to teleport to ensure I can get off a full Sonic Blow before trick blading afterwards. This was my first off burst of the cycle. As the fight is going on, you'll see I refresh Dark Flare as it comes off cooldown. As touched on before, this is just free damage and should always be placed if possible. In bosses that move around a lot, like Slime here, try to keep it in a central location. Thankfully, using it on the second platform also allows it to hit the boss above and below, so it's a great spot for it. As a majority of my other skills come off cooldown, I get my partial burst ready. Since I use smoke screen during the stun phase, unfortunately I don't have anything to keep me in dark sight. Regardless, I pop a couple buffs and Jenny iframe to comfortably get off my partial burst, despite the boss throwing lasers and one-hit KO attacks at me.
when Sonic Blow comes off cooldown from the Partial Burst. I have another Veil ready to go, so I use that and Sonic Blow for one last off burst before the next check. I also use this time to ensure that I block the doors that I need to, as I know I don't have much time left in this phase. The boss enters the check, then it's rinse and repeat. Before I wrap up the video, I briefly wanted to touch on the type of bursting you should be doing in each boss, as well as some special situations that may apply. For Lotus, perform all bursting as normal. Save smokescreen for partial burst, or when you or your party want a free pass for the ground lasers. For Damien, also perform all bursting as normal, saving smokescreen for the partial burst. For Guardian Angel Slime, burst like I showed before, which is normal except for using smokescreen with your full burst. For Lucid, perform all bursting as normal. P2 may be tricky to position a smokescreen with her moving around so much, so instead it can be used during your full burst to be sure you actually get some use out of it. P3, be sure you use smokescreen with your full burst. For Will, burst normally for all phases, saving smokescreen for partial burst. If need be, break up your burst in P1 to try to take each health bar down evenly. For Gloom, use your smokescreen for full burst. I like to save slash shadow formation and shadow walker for terror state, so I usually avoid partial bursting due to the nature of the fight and the timings for me. My fight is mostly full burst without shadow walker, followed by two or three off bursts instead. For Varus Hilla, burst normally for the whole fight. Save smokescreen for partial burst. For Dark now, burst normally for the whole fight as well, saving smokescreen again for the partial burst. For Black Mage, burst normally with your party. This means using smokescreen for your full burst. If you are soloing the fight, what the hell are you doing watching this guide? You're a goddamn whale already, and probably understand Shadow or Bursting completely anyways. But if you really need it spelled out, Burst is normal, saving Smokescreen for Partial Burst. Feel free to use Smokescreen for Full Burst in P1 if you really want to maximize damage and get out of P1 as soon as possible. For Saren, Burst normally, using Smokescreen with your Party Burst, or to help with party members avoiding pillars instead in the Sunset phase. For Soloing, I bow to you because you are a god. A god who knows to burst normally and using smokescreen for off burst, or full burst if used during midnight phase, as it'll come off cooldown while dodging in sunrise phase. That about covers everything I can think of. I appreciate you sitting through one of my long, drawn out guides once again. I hope you at least learned something new about how to burst as a shadower. That's it for shadower guides that I currently had planned. Next up are some ideas that I had about boss specific guides. If there's anything else you want to see from me, feel free to leave a comment down below with what your idea is. I'm always open to new ideas if it's what the community can benefit from or would like to see. As always, a like and subscribe is always appreciated, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Until next time, this has been Chiseler, goodbye and good night.